What's up you guys, it's Sir Scrub here, bringing you some more Scrub to you go. And in today's video, we're finally getting around to my Endymion Spellbook deck profile. Um, I wouldn't exactly call this a budget version. I did consolidate all of my available resources to create this deck, because for me, this is going to be my competitive deck for the next format, following Dark Neo Storm and things like that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this in the future. And please let me know just how shite this deck is down in the comment section below. But with all that junk out of the way, let's go ahead and jump both feet into this. Starting off with three copies of Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic. Endymion is probably one of the greatest, my personal favorite cards ever printed. Um, this deck for me has a little bit of a personal backstory. The first structure deck that I ever bought or ever was given as a little child was the original Order of the Spell or uh, Spellcasters Miter. I don't remember the name of it, but it was the original Endymion structure deck. So to have it reprinted and to make it actually competitive viable, competitively viable for me is awesome. And it this guy just embodies all of that. First off, he's your primary high scale. He's going to be what you're using to pendulum summon more often than not. He can summon himself from the scale zone, so there is also that. Not to mention, if this is the only monster you get on board and you have something with a spell counter on it, you can at least get one piece of negation out no matter what. And then to complement that, we have the three copies of Servant of Endymion. Um, this is also probably one of the best ways to make Electromite in the deck. And considering it is a low, it is a two scale, in the worst situation it can be a low scale if you need it to be, but it's primarily going to be the best way for you to turbo into Electromite. Um, moving on from that, I have the two blue boys. Um, I think Blue Boy's best at two, just because you don't want three of them to break your hands up. Um, so for those that don't know, when he's normal summoned, he allows you to add any spellbook card, uh, is it spell or a spellbook card? Yeah, spell card from deck to hand. So he kind of allows us to finish off the whole spellbook engine, but we'll talk about the spells when we get there. I think he's a fantastic card. As soon as I saw these guys announced, I immediately thought they needed spellbooks, and the spellbook engine can just unbreak your worst of hands, not to mention it gets you two spell counters live. There's better, more competitively viable ways to play the deck, but I feel like spellbooks and Endymion kind of belong together. That and the fact that they're in the structure deck, eh, Konami kind of wanted you to play them with these guys. Um, now for the supporting engines, I'm going to do these from what I think are least popular in this deck to most popular. So starting off, we have a small dragon engine just to um, have access to the guard dragons in the extra deck. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but these guys can help you strengthen your boards. They can also help you wombo combo. Uh, Draco can summon itself to his own link monster points too. So at worst, it's free link fodder. Same thing with Destrudo. You can all also go into the odd eyes package with this card. And Darkness Metal is just the definition of wombo combos. Moving on from there, we have the Mythical Beast engine, the two Jackal and one Cerberus. Um, I tried to play this deck without this engine and the next one, and it's kind of really hard to do. Jackal King gives you just awesome, awesome layer of negates on the board, not to mention they can also rack up spell counters on your Citadel if you see the Master Cerberus. Um, just really, really fantastic cards. They really complement any Pendulum deck's playstyle, but because this deck is also... Spell counter base, there's some inherent synergy there. I'm moving on from that, I really tried to play this deck without it, but you just, you can't play a Pendulum deck these days without playing some form of Pendulum Magicians. So I'm just playing the three Harmonizing and the one Purple Poison Brick. Um, you can make Omega turn one, you can make a rank four, you can make Ignister, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things that you can make with these guys. Um, and being Pendulums, they automatically synergize with the rest of the deck. Really, really, it's basically impossible to play Endymions without some form of Magicians, and even I had to turn to the dark side. And the only engine that I think is more universally popular than the Pendulum Magician engine is the uh, Dark Worm Gate Zero combo, because Gate Zero just is the ultimate low scale. It'll, it gives you full access to your Pendulum Summon. Not that you're really hurting for low scales, but this is a searchable low scale, and there's plenty of ways to get Dark Worm out. The one thing I would recommend is you could play around and play more copies of Dark Worm. I only had access to one, so that's the only reason I'm playing it at one. And then to round out the monster lineup, I'm just playing three copies of Ash. Uh, Structured Exo Burner coming in for the win here. Um, you can, these are kind of free spots, you could play other combo pieces and stuff here, I just, Ash Blossom is just one of those generically good cards. 
Um, that's it for the monsters, so let's go ahead and move into the spell cards. Starting off the spells, we have the three copies of Citadel and the one copy of Terraforming. Um, you could play around with it and play Terraforming it too, but uh, you want to see Citadel, but you don't want to see Citadel too much. And the fact that it's also searchable off of Spell Power Mastery means that it's not really, Terraforming is not really necessary per se, because you can just search this off of uh, Mastery. Um, but Citadel is a really, really great card because it allows you to use its spell counters for other cards. And Mastery is just fantastic. It's your search card. And it gives you two spell counters in the place of one. So it by itself gets you most of the way to resolving servant. So all you really need is to see any other spell card in general that you can just activate. Really, really fantastic card. Adds a whole other level of consistency to the deck. Moving on, we have the rest of the spell books. I'm playing three secrets and the one knowledge. Um, you only really play one knowledge because it's highly searchable, and if you see it in your hand by itself, it's a brick. Whereas if you see a secrets by your hand, you're going to get some pluses. If you see the blue boy in your hand, you know, the engine is still playable. But if you see the knowledge in your hand, then you need another brick just to make this card live. So you really don't want to see it by itself. Um, whereas secrets, you know, is going to allow you to just search out the blue boy, which is going to get the whole thing running. Then we have the three copies of Foolish Burial. Um... <laughs> That, the reason I say it like that is because the only monsters that you want to foolish are dragon monsters, so Shrine sets that up perfectly. Um, it sets up your Dark Worm plays, sets up your Destrudo plays, all st sorts of stuff like that. Fantastic cards. You could drop my next card for another copy of Shrine, because I am playing the one copy of Monster Reborn. Just to get you that extra body on board, you can um, use the Magician package to make... Uh, Omega, have Omega return the purple poison back to the grid guard, and then Monster Reborn it back onto the field and just Wombo Combo off from there, or it gives you another body when you're making your guard dragon plays. The next one of I'm playing is one copy of a Mythical Institution. This is kind of like another copy of Mastery in the fact that it can let you search, but it lets you search any card that you can play spell counters on, not just Endymion cards. So there's also that. Um, it's, it's a fantastic card. It can use spell counters anywhere from the field by its own effect, so you can have a bunch of spell counters loaded up on the Citadel and take them off without having to use the Citadel's effect and then search out a Servant and go off from there. And the last card I'm playing just to round out the main deck is just one copy of Allure. There's so many Allure targets in this deck, you could you could play around with it. One thing that I thought about doing was dropping the Ash Blossoms for the other two Allures in the last Terraforming. There's all sorts of ways you can play around with this list. This is just the most consistent way that I've found it. Um, but that's it for the main deck, so let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck, and then I'll get out of you guys' lives. So starting off the extra deck, the card that turned this from a kind of expensive budget deck into this is no longer a budget deck, uh, one copy of Saryuja. You really need Saryuja to make your Guard Dragon plays go off. If you can't afford a Saryuja, you can play Zephyr Metaltron instead. It's kind of like a budget option. It just doesn't give you all the massive wombo combos that Saryuja does. Uh, one copy of Borlo Dragon. Borlord out stuff that is otherwise impossible to out, so you play Borlord Dragon. Uh, one copy of Electromite. If you're playing a Pendulum deck and you're not playing Electromite, you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm playing one copy of Underclock Taker. This is just has really good arrows. I've thought about cutting this for like uh, Hieratic Seal or something else, but eh, it, you, it's up to you. It's kind of like a free slot. And then I'm playing the three Guard Dragon monsters, the one LP, Agar Pain, and Flash Charge Dragon. Um, you guys know what these guys do, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot on this. It's Flash Charge that I really want to talk about. So, like, when you go off into your Guard Dragon plays, right, and you get your Guard Dragon target right above your um, Saryuja, and you've got your monsters here, you can just link off the LP and the Agar Pain for Flash Charge, which can pop the next monster summon to the extra monster zone, allowing you to get, like, another semi-form of disruption just to make your opponent's life difficult, and it is surprisingly, it helps out a surprising amount in strengthening your boards. Moving on from the Link Monsters, we're going to go ahead and move into the Xyz. Starting off, we're playing one copy of Hope Harbinger. You can go into this card off of Master Cerberus and Omega, so it really depends. For me personally, I'd rather have a Hope Harbinger than an Omega against something like Sky Striker, because I'd rather make sure I'd hit that engage rather than take a chance with Omega. Plus, if you put Omega in the graveyard, it can put itself back, so it's not exactly bad. It's really up to you. This is another one of those free slots. Um, I'm playing one copy of Flare Metal Dragon. Sometimes you just want to watch the world burn, and uh, <laughs> it's a pretty fun card.
One copy of Abyss Dweller. I'd rather make Abyss Dweller than Omega against Salamangrates any day. Because this is just a literal turn skip against Salamangrates. So I would use the Magician Package against this if you know you're playing against Salad. If not, Omega is generally the best thing to do when you blind go first. Then we have the whole Odd Eyes Package. Uh, fantastic cards, it gives you just that extra layer of disruption on your board, allowing your boards just to be that little bit extra unbreakable. Vortex is an Omni Negate, and it, it's really, really cool. And then for the last two Synchros, I'm playing the previously talked about Omega. I think I've talked at length on the shit that th this card can do in this deck. And then the, just the one copy of Abyss, freshly reprinted in dual power, so it's nice and cheap for all the scrubs like me. Um, that's all I've got for this one, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this. Let me know how shit the deck was down in the comment section below. Uh, most importantly, don't forget, be a scrub. Peace.